Ooh. Stay with me on this video to find out what I found on Facebook Marketplace and how you can repair old cameras you find. Hey team, Will Cobb here and I just landed a sweet camera haul for 50 bucks. I got these two big boxes of cameras ranging from all over the place from 90s and some digitals to old ancient, I don't even know what film they use. So I'm gonna walk through what I got and some tips on seeing if a camera's working when you go and buy it. So let's see what I got in these boxes. First off, there's two boxes here. I've already gone through them a little bit and I wanted to show you what I got in the big box and what I got in the little box. The little box is more stuff I could possibly use. The big box was stuff that's just so ancient. I don't even know if they make film for it. I don't even know what to do with this box. Maybe I could sell it. Maybe I can make my money back for it. So all in all, these boxes came out to 50 bucks and that really wasn't that bad for what's in it. There were a few 35 millimeter cameras I thought I could use, so first box. So looking through this box, it looks like there's a uh, some sort of 35 millimeter, $25 listed on the price there. That's really interesting. There's this weird square format camera that has like one of those flash bulbs that they used back in the day. This little, I think this case goes with this little camera. Oh, this is a Canon flash. I actually think I can use this with my AE-1. I don't even know what this thing is. Keystone, isn't that a beer? What is this plastic thing? Every manual under the sun. I saw this manual and I was freaking out as if that was in there, but it was not and I was bummed about it. Ooh. Nice little 35 millimeter point and shoot. Oh my gosh, and then there's a ton of box cameras. Now, these things are ancient. I don't even know what film they use. But they're really cool looking. Maybe I'll have to do a video on how to figure out how to shoot these things. There might still be film out for these things. Well, this is like a uh, kaleidoscope. Uh, I think you put, you must put 3D images in here or something like that. Well. At least you can build a tower of box cameras. Let's check out what I got in the other box of possibly more usable cameras. A note up point and shoot. This thing seems like a fun little camera. Whoa. Came with a bunch of these ancient cameras. What is this bad boy? Wow. That is an old, I don't even know what to do with this one. A nice 110 camera. I've got another 110 camera I've been wanting to try out. I'm just waiting on film to come in for these guys to try these out. So that's pretty exciting to get another one. Look at this leather bad boy. That thing is crazy. Oh my gosh. Imagine just like running around in olden times with this thing. That just would just be crazy. And then one more thing I took out and I was already playing with a lot is this light meter. Just look at how ancient this is. It has this like element in here that reads the light. Okay, I've separated them in the two piles and I think the Minolta point and shoot, this Fujifilm point and shoot, and the 110, what is this thing? Hynamax? Uh, I think these are gonna be our biggest winners from the haul. I know what film they are and I know that they're probably in working condition. Now this one I'm pretty sure uses like 610 film or something like that. And I think they still do make that. I've seen it on the Freestyle. I've seen it on Freestyle's film website available. So these might not be the end of the world to have. There's this Kodak camera, which was in the case when I pulled it out. It looks pretty cool, but I think it's missing the film winder. Um, so that's a problem. I'm not 100% sure this one's gonna work out, but it's a pretty cool camera. As for all the box cameras, I think I can sell those for maybe 10 bucks on eBay. Even just being old and ancient, they'll probably land a pretty good $10, $15 price for someone to put on their wall. Or if someone knows about how to use those, great, that's awesome. So why am I talking about all these old cameras? Buying old film cameras can be risky business. When you're buying them on eBay 
or online somewhere and you're not seeing them. Some people can be scamming you or telling you that it's in a different condition that is actually on there. So you're never gonna know if it's good or not until you actually get it. When I bought my Mamiya 645 Pro, I got this from Japan and the lens that came with it was super foggy, but you didn't know until you were actually shooting with it. So I had a big headache. I had to go back to the seller, try to get them to pay for it, to fix it. That was a big headache I could have avoided if I saw it in person. In a scenario like that, you're definitely gonna wanna vet whoever you're buying from and make sure that they're a legitimate source. The easiest thing to do if you're looking for just any sort of old camera is to just cruise Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and find one of these cameras. I've been loving point and shoots recently, so finding a bunch of point and shoots has been awesome. Out of my haul, I found three awesome little point and shoots that I wanna be using, and I'm gonna try these all out, and I'm actually gonna give these away to you. Um, everybody really liked the last giveaway I did. I'm gonna be giving these away eventually throughout the months, giving these away to you guys, my viewers, and uh, just tell you guys how much I appreciate your support. So I wanna talk about a few things that you're gonna be looking for when you're going out and buying a camera from someone that you're gonna meet off of Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or wherever. The first thing you wanna look for is is the film readily available? With the 35 millimeter point and shoots, 35 millimeter film is still being made today. The 110 camera that I got, I made sure that there is film for this and I do wanna be shooting with 110. So knowing the film is pretty important. Some of those big fold out cameras that I got, I don't even know if those have the film. Because the haul had cameras that did have film that was available today, I still went with the haul. You can go and research this to see if that film is still being made, but sometimes it's just better to stick with 35 millimeter, 120, maybe 110, and some other ones like the large format that if you know how to get into that, then that's where you should go. The second thing that you wanna be doing is looking at the battery compartment in the camera and making sure there's no corrosion in there. Cause if there is, it might not work. This one's jank. And lo and behold, there is corrosion on this one. This one is gonna take some work when I get home. Something else to look for is what kind of batteries do, does it use? I like to bring a few different types of batteries with me to test out any cameras that come my way. And I'll list some battery types right here that you should bring with you. And I'll list them down in the description for you guys to buy and take with you. Some of the simple ones are like the double A's and the triple A's, but there's also some weird ones that a lot of these old point and shoots used. The next thing you wanna look for is the shutter firing. Now, if the shutter's not firing, there might be a problem or it might need the battery. So this is why you should definitely bring batteries with you. So this one tin camera I found, you cock it on the back like that. And now it sounds like it's firing. What you wanna do is look through the back while you're firing the shutter to see if you can see the flash of the shutter firing. If you see it, it's probably working. If not, there's probably something going on or it needs a battery. Another thing you wanna be doing with looking at the shutter is you wanna look inside the lens to see if your aperture rings have gunk on them. If your aperture rings have gunk on them, that's probably like an old oil that's gotten on there and that can affect the accuracy of the shutter. That's something that is very difficult to clean if you don't know what you're doing, but some people with a little bit of experience can clean those as well. I definitely don't recommend that if you're not experienced, so take that with a grain of salt. Another thing to look for when you've got your old camera in your hand in the store is to try to put those batteries in there and check and see if the meter's working. Now, if the meter is actually working, you should see some indications inside of the viewfinder. The meter could look like it's working, but be off. And I definitely have run into that several times. And ultimately that's okay. If the meter's not working, that's kind of like a bonus if it is working. If it's not working, you can just use an external light meter or your phone with like the Lumu light meter app. I think that works really well. Even with this camera, which I know that the meter is working, I still pull out the Lumu light meter and use that sometimes just to be sure. For the point and shoot cameras, we can throw in our batteries if there's not a ton of corrosion and see if it fires up. This one sounds like it fires up, so I think this one's working. Another thing to be looking for, and this one's probably pretty obvious, is that if there's any fog in the lens. Like I was saying before, there was fog in my lens when I bought it, and I didn't even know that until I shot my first roll through it. All the shots were really foggy, really weird, and I didn't know what it was because you could look down the lens and it was just on the slight edges of it, and you just didn't know until you actually developed the film. So the final tip for buying a used camera is just check the internet. Now you could go meet someone on Facebook Marketplace and then they could be charging out the butt for a camera and you don't know. 
it's so easy to pull out your phone, check the internet. You probably are already doing this, but some people don't think about it. Some people just think that it's a good deal or maybe the person's telling them that it's a good deal. If you're just looking for a fun camera to find in a junk store and hopefully it works and take some fun, cool film shots with it, that's great. But if you're collecting or something, then that premium price might be something for you. But ultimately we're just out here trying to have fun and grab a cheap camera and take some cool pics. So with those tips, go out to Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or wherever and find yourself an old camera and maybe you can get it working and have a cool old retro camera. Well guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching my haul of these awesome new cameras. And I hope you learned something that you can pick up one of these cameras from your thrift store, from Facebook Marketplace and not be worried about, is it gonna work if it's not? You can take a chance on it. You can talk them down to get a really good deal. And you can find some really cool cameras out there that might seem like they're not working, but with a little bit of luck, you can try to get them working. So I'm actually gonna be giving away this camera in the next video. So stay tuned for that. This is an awesome little camera and I've had fun running around with this thing. It looks like a piece of junk. It kind of is a piece of junk, but at the same time, it takes really interesting photos and I think you will love it if you win it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video and hit the little bell to get notifications of new videos coming out weekly. I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video. Happy shooting.